What's up guys, Justin again. I just wanted to make a video about a pretty cool gun uh, that I bought. It's a CNR gun and I live in California so uh, getting guns that are off roster is very exciting. Uh, unfortunately I am going to have to sell this gun um, but before I did sell it I just wanted to do a quick kind of review to see if you guys, uh, to just give you guys uh, some information on the gun and, and if you do like it and you're enthusiastic about um, World War II Nazi guns, uh, you'll like this video. Okay, so what we have here is a Mauser HSC chambered in 7.65 millimeter, uh, also known as uh, 32 ACP. Okay, this uh, particular um, pistol uh, is a World War II police Nazi carry. Uh, it's not a, it's not the SS. It's just regular uniform police. Like, and they had so many different types of police back in uh, Germany uh, at that time that um, I had to buy a whole book uh, on on the on the different units just to kind of do some research because I was excited about it. Um, but yeah, they had fire police. Like they had like basically fire marshal police. They had. Um, Bus police, port police, uh, they had military police, they had police for everything. Just regular traffic police. So this is a re this most likely would have been uh, belonged to a, a traffic police officer or someone that is a local police, part of the local um, law enforcement. And um, it was a cool find. I got it from Legacy Collectibles. Um, this actually was the second one. The first one I got. Uh, had in some feeding issues and so I sent it back and it uh, wasn't feeding right which was very unfortunate it would like shoot two rounds and then it would jam two rounds and jam so I sent it back uh, the dude over there the the owner of the company really uh, he's a really good dude he actually sent me this from his personal collection um, and these are they're not hard to find but in this um, good of condition they are actually kind of hard to find um, so this is a pretty cool pistol. Okay, it has a magazine. It has a little tab here. You can push the tab, release the magazine. Um, it has some safety features in it. The slide locks back. If the magazine, once you like eject the magazine, you pull the slide back, um, it will stay, it will basically stay open until you slam a new mag in there. And then it'll move forward. Uh, the trigger pull is very heavy. And it's a little, I don't really like it, it's a little creepy. It's like kind of a, you can feel there and then if more resistance there and then there's the wall, boom. But it is a uh, double action uh, pistol. Um, made of wood grips, uh, some kind of, and, and so by the way, when you're, there's so many different variations, there, there's probably like 10 different variations of this pistol. So. Uh, depending on the finish, depending on the proof marks, depending on the serial number, depending on the other proof marks that are right here and up here, uh, and the, the handle material, that will tell you when it was made, where it was made, how who used it, how it was used, and uh, just a lot more information out there. And there's a really cool website called Veermark Awards. It's W. Uh, e I R H M A R K or something like that. Um, you'll you'll find it. Just go put that in Google search and you'll you'll be able to find it. Um, but yeah, that's a good place for some um, particular information uh, on this weapon. Okay, so um, I shot this this particular one. I did shoot. Um, it does need a lot of lube. Okay, can't deny that. It has a safety on it. You can do, um, for accuracy, if you want to just do a little single shot and cock, um, it lightens up the trigger pull a lot. Okay, it, um, it feels pretty good in my hand. I really uh, think it's a pretty cool pistol. Um, what I don't like about it, let's see. It's not that reliable, honestly. Uh, and I don't want to have to modify it, and there's not, there, you know, I don't want to break anything on it. So. I didn't really, um, I didn't get as much enjoyment out of having it than I thought it would. That's really what the, what the problem was. Um, I didn't get much enjoyment out of it 
because it's just it's 70 years old and it's such a collector's item and for me I'm not the type of person that likes to uh, get something and not use it and have something as a safe queen I don't like that uh, it's a waste of money might as well just sell it and get something that you're gonna shoot so that was kind of my um, my idea but I am gonna go today I'm gonna go I'm gonna shoot this get some footage and roll it out at the end of this video here uh, but yeah, and um, yeah, just I think it's a cool pistol. It's a Nazi carry. Uh, it's a very great condition. I'll give you a little close up here. Uh, see if the camera will uh, focus on some details here. Uh, but yeah, it says uh, Mauser Worker, uh, AG Oberndorf, and then it says Model HSC. And see these like three lines right there. Um, actually tells you a little bit more about the model as well um, it's a really just a really nice pistol it really re reminds me of those James Bond pistols those um, super classic James Bond pistols it has that kind of Nazi um, feel and look to it it's super cool looking uh, I do really like it it just unfortunately um, because it was so it wasn't really reliable and I was afraid of messing it up uh, I really just want to get something that is going to suit me a little more and I'm going to be able to use and abuse a little bit without worrying about destroying something that's kind of um, kind of priceless and I mean it's not priceless it's about a thousand bucks but you know so, you know what I mean it's something that's collectible and someone would really love this uh, gun and in my opinion if you're willing to sell a gun that you have you probably didn't do enough research in, before you bought the gun and um, didn't really think about it. Uh, I, I really did do a, a buttload of research on this gun and I liked it and liked the way it looked and I was into CNR uh, pistols for a, for a long time uh, but I had never owned one and so when I finally bought one of my own uh, I kind of kind of decided that you know it's they're really nice but they're not daily shooters they're not leisure shooters you know these are Things that you keep in like a wall cabinet or display it, um, you know, in your office or something. Um, so yeah, that was, that's kind of where I was coming from on this. Um, it's it's cool, it's a cool uh, pistol though. The ergonomics are really nice. The, it's pretty weighty, pretty heavy. Um, it fits in the hand really nice. It really does. Uh, it's, man, the thing is heavy. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna shoot it today. I'm gonna give you guys some footage of, of me shooting it. And if you wanna know how to field strip this, I'm gonna show you real quick, okay? So we'll go ahead and pull the trigger. This thing was, I don't even have ammo for this thing right now. So don't leave a retarded comment that I didn't clear. Um, so what you're gonna do, is you wanna make sure this hammer's down, you wanna put it right here. Okay, let's try it again. This is what I'm gonna do. Put the magazine in. If I remember the battery of arms on this. Magazine in, fire, cock it. Okay, it's unsafe, that's why. So, magazine's in, fired. I'm gonna go ahead and fire, click this down. Why don't I just click that down? Uh, safe. Yeah, this thing's a pain in the ass. Okay, I think I got it this time. Okay, magazine out. Click this down. Click that. There you go. That that's that's what it is. Okay, so magazine has to be out. Okay. That thing is greasy. That's good. Uh, magazine has to be out. Put the safety on. Um, make sure the trigger's fired, and then it'll just kind of come off. Um, here's the internals. You got a little spring in there. Spring actually surrounds the the uh, barrel here, and you got the barrel really nice. Okay, so that's uh, that's what it is right there. Got your little firing pin in there. Pretty cool. That that's it. It's very very easy, very simple. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to be selling this and I'm getting an XD, uh, XDS 45 and I'm excited. But I, I just wanted to make sure that I just get this on video and make sure, um, just put the information out there and then I'm going to kind of assemble this into a, a longer 
video with some shooting in there and see what we can do. I did polish some stuff. I did uh, polish the feed ramp. Uh, so hopefully that kind of made a difference and I'll see how reliable it is uh, when, I, when I go and shoot it today. All right guys, enjoy the video. And if you wanna give us a like and subscribe below, that'd be great. Let me know what you think. And if you have any other requests for any other uh, reviews, let me know. All right. Not bad. This thing really hits pretty good. Pretty good group. Mouths are seven yards. Unsung hero of the day, Mauser. Seven yards. Actually, it's done, dude. Good grouping. Okay, guys, it's Justin here. Um, so, I have some new data uh, on the Mauser HSC pistol. Uh, I, in the earlier in the video, I stated that I'm going to sell it. Uh, after going down to Burbank and actually getting uh, some quotes on how much you know people are willing to give uh, for the pistol, I was quoted 400 and uh, probably like 375, and another place said 250. Uh, I have it uh, on arms list right now for 740. Um, but after shooting it, uh, man, that thing is a tack driver. It is accurate, dude. It is super accurate with the tiny sight blade and the sight bead on it. Um, it's a little tack driver, dude. It is accurate as hell. I'm getting better groups with that thing than I am with my Glock. Um, so I shot the Glock 27 as well. Um, it wasn't as accurate. I got a bunch of flyers at first, and I think I need I need to do some work on it. Um, I'm gonna end up putting uh, probably a new safety plunger and maybe a spring kit to reduce the amount of pull weight on the trigger. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'll, I'll discuss that in another video. Um, the Glock 27, I'll put that in there. But an update on the HSC, it is a tack driver and I will put in some, uh, I'll put in some of those uh, pictures and videos of me shooting it today. I was doing completely unsupported uh, seven yards and I even tried some at 15 yards. Uh, I didn't have a fresh target So my I was kind of aiming at the upper left corner of the of a small one by one target And it was uh, I had like two or three on the paper, but other than that uh, I wasn't getting on the paper uh, at the 15 yard line, but that was because I, I ran out of uh, bullseye room uh, So I was just shooting the top left corner. So uh, But yeah, if I can get this thing see unfortunately after every round pretty much every round, uh, the bullet doesn't quite make it into the barrel fully. So that makes me think either I have a magazine problem or if I can uh, grind down the, uh, the inlet of the barrel uh, where, the, where the bullet enters, the back end of the barrel, if I grind that down a little, maybe the casing, the, the, the crease between the actual projectile and the casing of the bullet was kind of getting jammed in there, not fully going in. So I'm gonna try doing both. I'm gonna try grinding it down. I'm not gonna give that thing away for, for no $200, for no like, you know, three or 400 bucks. Uh, it's worth 900. If I can get it firing uh, pretty good, then I, I lube the hell out of it too. But if I can get that thing firing consistently, 
Uh, I wouldn't mind to use that for a, a CCW. It fits the hand really well. It's 32 ACP, which is, um, you can get it. You can get that ammo. Uh, I found it in stores. Uh, it's gotta be a gun shop, can't be in a Walmart. They're not gonna carry it. But if I can get that thing uh, loading right and actually putting the bullet in the chamber correctly after each shot, uh, maybe I gotta take it to a gunsmith uh, or buy a new, um, a brand new uh, remake of the magazine. I, I bought a new spring for the mag. Uh, it, it feeds better than it did, but still, it's not, it, it's, it's so accurate that I would hate to just give it away and not making hardly any money on it. So, uh, and the reason why I'm selling this is because I want to buy that uh, Springfield XDS for eight twenty. Um, but man, I shot my cousin's Glock thirty SF off roster uh, today, and we're using you know various types of ammo, whatever. And it was accurate, and it was a soft shooter. I was like, wow. This is decent. This is a great 45. It doesn't seem like a 45. It really doesn't with that double capture uh, spring that Glock has in the in the 30S. So I really don't know what to do right now. I want that XDS. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it's not as, as soft of a shooter as uh, as as the as the Glock 30 SF, the, the XDS is not as soft of a shooter, but none fancy has been raving about it. Uh, I, however, I did talk to some people in the gun, um, in, in Guns Direct, and they said that his friend sold his. So it makes me think, you know, I love none fancy, but that doesn't mean that all his data is 100% correct for everyone. He does the best he can, but people's hands are different, their skill quality is different. Uh, when it comes to handguns, their fundamentals are different. So, so yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of stumped now. I don't want to give that thing away for no 500 bucks to buy an XDS that I may not even like that much. And I know with Glock, I'm going to be safe. So I may end up keeping that and just buying a Glock 30S. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not sure. So, but yeah, if anyone has any information on how to get these things to feed more reliable, please leave a comment below, tag me in it, and I'll try to look at it, and hopefully we can, I can, I can get this thing to a, a place where I want to keep it, uh, where I want to keep the, the firearm uh, and not just get rid of it for half price because that's a big loss of money, man. So I need to either find a gunsmith or get a new mag or grind it down or all three of those in order to get it to uh, cycle right because if I can get that thing to cycle reliably that's a keeper it's a keeper so I don't know uh, I don't know man totally stumped on that one uh, so yeah I will update uh, update you guys via some future videos about what I'm gonna do or what I've done I did do a little bit of grinding on the on the barrel uh, on the feed ramp I, I grinded it down a little bit I think it might have helped I hope it did I think it's it's a little more reliable now, but still, it's just the, it's not fully uh, going into the to the chamber. So I need to do something about that. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm gonna put it on hold for sale because I'm not gonna get no $500 uh, give it away for half price. That's ridiculous. I've spent too much money on it, and if I can get that thing firing, uh, you know, firing correctly, man, that's a keeper, dude. It's a seriously cool little pistol, seriously accurate, more accurate than a Glock, uh, with, with stock sights. So I'll see, uh, I'll see what I'm going to do. I'm really going to be thinking about this. I'm not going to, I'm not the type of person to just, uh, sell a gun and just take a loss. You know, I really don't want to do that with guns. Um, so I don't know. I'm going to look into it though. Uh, yeah. So see what happens in the future all right guys appreciate you watching the video like and subscribe below and leave your comments please please leave your comments so that i can uh, if you have any information on how to make these things more reliable all right guys 87 out la patate